the only issue I have with this true crime documentary is the title. And I will explain why I feel like the title is not the best choice they could have made towards the end of this, because I kind of need to divulge a bit of what's revealed in the documentary to do that. But for the most part, I don't want to spoil it, because I definitely think you should watch it if you're into true crime. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, I hadn't heard of this case before. The only reason that I decided to watch this now over, say, any of the other true crime documentaries that are on my to-watch list is because it's set in Wales, and I love the Welsh accent. It was that simple. But the documentary itself proved to be pretty incredible. There is one thing that I think they should have done differently, actually, and I'll talk a little bit about that. It doesn't really spoil anything about what happened. So this looks at the the disappearance of Michael O'Leary, who had sent a text to his son um, and to other family members saying he was sorry and then went missing. But his son knew straight away that something was up because his father would always text him Welsh and he'd sent this message in English. And it's quite crazy to think that something so small and seemingly insignificant as the three words sent in a text could spark an entire missing person and then murder investigation. And it's quite eye-opening to think that something that tiny could completely ruin all of the things that a murderer had put in place to try and not get found out. So he is um, initially considered as a missing person, but very quickly the documentary jumps into the assumption that he has been murdered. And there are little bits of evidence to suggest that, but initially not so much. But what I didn't really like, and I won't say too much about who it was, but what I wasn't really a fan of is that they kind of told us very quickly who their suspect was. And it became very obvious that this person had a very strong motive for this. And I just felt like they could have... They could have maybe kept that a little bit more suspenseful to begin with. Because it's only an hour in length. It's not a massively long documentary. We don't have that much time to play with. But I think maybe they could have at least kept it behind just a little bit longer. So that we could continue as a viewer to try and work out if we thought or what we thought had happened. That's one of the reasons why true crime is so popular. Because people naturally, myself included, like to play detective when watching it. But we're kind of spoon fed everything here. But it's still fascinating. So it's very well edited. We get to hear from members of the family, from detectives involved in the case, um, from you know the diving teams and different forensic experts who were talking about things. It's There were a few scene of crime photos shown, but it's 100% safe insofar as being graphic or... Um, I don't even... Did we even get to see like any blood stains or anything? Top of my head, I can't remember. It's, you know, if you're new to true crime and you don't have the stomach for something more serious yet, then this is a very, very good entry-level true crime show that doesn't show anything graphic. It doesn't go into too much painful detail. But what I did like about it is that it gave us a good insight into the process of finding a body and the kind of things that they have to do and the the kind of teams involved as well because it's not just you know in tv shows you'll often get a a detective and maybe one socko down by a river or sifting through the grass no absolutely not how it works so i thought that was really uh, a really nice thing they included i don't know how much of it was reconstruction and how much of it was filmed at the time but i kind of got the impression that most of it was done in real time so as far as it's Editing is concerned, it's very good. The structure of the story, and it it is a story, documentaries are there to tell you a fact-based story, of course. I feel like it gave away far too much, far too quickly, and I kind of, it lost its element of suspense. It lost the qualities that make it a true crime documentary, and then it just became like reading an article. It, It wasn't quite as suspenseful. So that's something that could have been done a lot better and a lot more effectively. Now I'm going to bring in the spoiler, because I'm going to talk about the title and why it doesn't make much sense. So spoilers from here, if you're unfamiliar with the case and what actually happened, do check out the documentary. You'll work out pretty quickly what happened, Um, but keep watching it. It, it's It's a nice way to spend an hour or so. So the title 
nobody recovered. I mean, yes, that's technically true. There wasn't a body found. But the documentary makes it pretty clear and pretty obvious that the body was burned. So there wouldn't be a body to find. There wouldn't be a body to recover. So I'm not really sure why that's what they were focusing on. It's like, well, yeah, you didn't find a body, but you also have heavily speculated that the body was burned. So you're not going to find the body. So I thought that was a little bit of a a misleading title and kind of makes it seem like they're encouraging the public to, I guess, keep their eyes peeled for any um, remains or anything like that. And that that is really effective when it's a genuine, well, I suppose it is a genuine missing persons case in theory, um, or missing murdered persons case. But that only ever really works when you haven't got any idea where that body could be. It doesn't work here because they're heavily speculating the body was burned. They don't know it for a fact. The body could still be out there, but or, or bits of the body remains. But really saying no body recovered kind of suggests that they're implying, or it's easy to infer that the body could still be out there in a riverbed or in a shallow grave. And that's absolutely not what the actual documentary implies. So I think that was a bit of a red herring and a really poor choice, actually, because it kind of gives the false impression that he could still be found and maybe even false hope to the family, even though they're involved in this and are aware of all of the facts of the case. So that was disappointing. Really, I'm being very negative about this. And actually, the two things that are important, the well, I guess the main thing that's important is the suspense and watching it as an actual episode that's designed to be in, enjoyed in the most gruesome way possible, honestly. The enjoyment of true crime is something that I think is fundamentally so fascinating about the human mind. But that's another story. They could have held things back. They could have done it over two episodes if they really wanted to. I find that maybe there wasn't enough there to hold it back. Like maybe they immediately had their suspect. They immediately found these clues that pinned him to it. It does seem like an odd one to choose for a, for a documentary because there isn't any suspense. There's not much mystery to it. It seems like all of the facts are there apart from maybe a slight question about whether the body was burned or not or if anything went into the river. So I'm not really sure why they chose to make this into a documentary, but it was interesting enough. It it was interesting. I I enjoyed watching it. It's on ITV. I don't think I mentioned that at all. I would recommend watching it if you are into this kind of thing. And as I said, it is kind of entry-level true crime. It's very safe and not very um, bloodthirsty or anything at all. So check it out and let me know what you think. But personally, you know, I kind of enjoyed the time watching it, but on reflection, it's not actually a good documentary. Uh, It's not a good way to tell this narrative from a viewing perspective. Maybe from the family's perspective, they're glad that they got the story out. I mean, I'm I'm sure they are. Uh, I completely support that, of course. But yeah, from a viewing perspective, there are so many things they could have done differently. But it's still not bad. Give it a watch. It's reasonable enough.